हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम गौरव कुमार जैन फ्रॉम जामिया हमदर्द यूनिवर्सिटी न्यू दिल्ली टुडे वी विल स्टडी मॉड्यूल कैप्सूल पार्ट वन सॉफ्ट कैप्स्यूल्स अंडर पेपर प्रोडक्ट डेवलपमेंट पार्ट वन इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी विल लर्न अबाउट रॉ मटीरियल्स एम्प्लॉयड इन मैन्युफैक्चरिंग ऑफ कैप्सूल शेल्स प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ जिलेटिन यूज टू मैन्युफैक्चर कैप्सूल शेल्स manufacturing procedures of soft capsules and quality control storage and packaging required for soft capsules now to start with introduction capsules are one of the oldest dosage form in pharmaceutical history known to the ancient egyptian the earliest european reference is contained in a travel account of 1730 which mentions the pharmacist d poly from vienna who prescribed oval shaped capsules in the hope of covering up the unpleasant taste of the pure turpentine to the people suffering from gout a further 100 years were to pass before the first capsule made up of gelatin appeared in 1834 pharmacist joseph g a dublanc and the pharmacy student francois moths were granted a patent for a method to produce a single piece olive shaped gelatin capsule that was sealed with a drop of warm gelatin solution moths continued to work on improving the gelatin capsules and his invention was so successful that by the following year capsules were being produced in many different parts of the world the frenchman j c lehubi was the first to suggest two piece capsules which he produced by dipping silver coated metal pins into a gelatin solution and then drying them despite the great entrance in lehubi's patent which describes the principle of hard gelatin capsule manufacturing that is still used today technical difficulties in manufacturing and separate fitted sections the body and the cap stopped further development of this dosage form for another century it was in 1931 that arthur colton on behalf of parke davis and company succeeded in designing a machine which simultaneously manufactured both bodies and caps and fitted them together to form a hard gelatin capsule in 1934 robert p sherer invented a machine a rotary dry press that could produce soft gelatin capsules to contain medications it is amazing to realize that machines originally built in 1930s still represents the basic design of today's machinery only minor modifications have been made to it since that time in the interest of improved product quality and greater technical efficiency to start with capsules capsules are described as solid dosage forms in which the drug substance is enclosed within a soft or hard soluble shell generally made up of gelatin in addition to having the advantage of elegance ease of use and portability capsules have become a popular dosage form because they provide a smooth slippery easy swallowed and tasteless shell for drugs the last advantage is particularly beneficial for drugs having an unpleasant taste or odor capsules are economically produced in large quantities and in a wide range of colors and they generally provide ready availability of the contained drug since minimal excipient and little pressure are required to compact the material capsules may be classified as either soft or hard depending on the nature of the capsule shell Soft shell capsules are made from a flexible plasticized gelatin film by the process in which they are formed filled and sealed in a single operation they are primarily used for oily liquids and for active ingredients that are dissolved or suspended in oil hard shell capsules on the other hand are manufactured and filled in a completely separate operation they are made in two halves a lower diameter body that is filled and then sealed using a higher diameter cap in further contrast to soft capsules which are filled with oily liquids hard capsules typically are filled with powders granules or pellets 
although recent modification to hard capsules permit the filling of liquids or semi solid mattresses there are currently are few commercial examples both of these classes of capsules are made from aqueous solution of gelling agents such as animal protein gelatin or plant polysaccharide carrageenan modified cellulose derivative and modified starch however the present module will focus on the properties of gelatin since it is most widely used material for the preparation of commercial capsule shells the module will also discuss the processes involved in development of soft capsules to begin with we will first discuss the raw materials which are used for development of capsule shells the capsule shell of both soft and hard capsules are made principally of gelatin blends and may contain plasticizers water and a small amount of colorants opacifying agents flavorings preservatives and medicaments to achieve desired effects the first raw material is gelatin the physical chemical and physiological properties of gelatin make it an ideal substance for the capsulation of pharmaceutical products the gelatin possesses the following basic properties first it is colorless odorless non toxic and biodegradable it is widely used in food stuffs and acceptable for use worldwide gelatin from different sources have different physical and chemical properties which can be utilized during preparation of capsule shell gelatin could be molded suitably and is a good film forming material the gelatin films are homogeneous strong and flexible most importantly gelatin is readily soluble in biological fluids at body temperature gelatin is a heterogeneous product derived by irreversible hydrolytic extraction of animal collagen there are several varieties of gelatin the composition of which depends on the hydrolytic treatment used and the source of collagen based on the hydrolytic treatment two types of gelatin are available type a gelatin which is derived from acid treatment of pork skin and exhibits an isoelectric point in the region of ph 9 the second type is type b gelatin which is derived from alkali treatment of bone and has a isoelectric zone in the ph region of 4.7 the flow chart for the manufacture of gelatin for use in capsule is shown on the screen based on the source gelatin can be classified as either bone gelatin or skin gelatin blends of bone and skin gelatin are normally used for capsule production the bone gelatin produces a tough firm film but the film tends to be hazy and brittle the pork skin gelatin contributes plasticity and clarity to the blend thereby reducing haze or cloudiness in the finished capsules two recent developments have taken place in the gelatin manufacturing first use of green or fresh bones in the preparation of type b gelatin the gelatin so obtained has distinctive properties than gelatin obtained from aged bones second acid treatment of bone to produce type a gelatin the resulting gelatin shows an altered isoelectric point at ph 5.5 to 6 and an intermediate physical characteristic for the film both of the aforementioned materials are commercially available and are used in capsule production the additional properties which affect the selection of gelatin for capsule manufacturing are bloom strength viscosity and iron content of the gelatin the bloom or gel strength of gelatin is a measure of cohesive strength of the cross linking that occurs between gelatin molecules and is proportional to the molecular weight of the gelatin bloom is determined by measuring the weight in grams required to move a plastic plunger of 0.5 inch in diameter 4 mm deep into a 6.6% gelatin gel that has been held at 10 degree celsius for 17 hours bloom ranges from 150 to 250 g generally 
the higher the bloom strength of the gelatin used the more physically stable is the resulting capsule shell the cost of gelatin is also directly proportional to its bloom strength consequently the higher bloom gelatins are only used when necessary to improve the physical stability of a product or for large capsules which require greater structural strength during manufacturing second property is viscosity viscosity of gelatin is determined by using 6.6% gelatin in water at 60 degree celsius it is measure of molecular chain length and determines the manufacturing characteristic of the gelatin film the viscosity of gelatin can range from 25 to 45 millipoise standard capsule shells are made up of gelatin with viscosity 38 plus minus 2 millipoise low viscosity ranging from 25 to 32 millipoise high bloom ranging from 180 to 250 gram gelatin are used in conjugation with the capsulation of hygroscopic vehicles or solids these modified formulas afford less opportunity for the hygroscopic film materials to attract water from the shell and thereby improve the ingredient and physical stability of the product the third property is iron content iron is always present in the raw gelatin and its concentration usually depends on the iron content of the large quantities of water used in its manufacturing gelatins used in the manufacturing of soft gelatin capsule should not contain more than 15 parts per million of this element because of its effect on food drug and cosmetic certified dyes and its possible color reactions with organic compounds the next important ingredient used in the manufacturing of capsule shell is plasticizer the plasticizers are more common for soft gelatin capsules the ratio by weight of dry plasticizer to dry gelatin determines the hardness of the gelatin shell assuming that there is no effect from the capsulated material some examples of glycerin gelatin ratios along with their typical usage are shown on the screen hard capsules have glycerin is to gelatin ratio of 0.4 is to 1 medium capsules have glycerin is to gelatin ratio of 0.6 is to 1 and soft capsules have glycerin is to gelatin ratio of 0.8 is to 1 The plasticizers used with gelatin in soft capsule manufacture are relatively few. Glycerin, sorbitol and pharmaceutical grade sorbitol and combination of these are the most prevalent. The ratio by weight of water to dry gelatin can vary from 1.0 plus minus 0.3 of water to 1 of dry gelatin depending on the viscosity of the gelatin being used. for most formulations however it is approximately 1 is to 1 since only water is lost during the capsule drying process the percentage of plasticizer and gelatin in the shell is increased but the important plasticizer to gelatin ratio remains unchanged apart from gelatin and plasticizers some additional components are also used during preparation of capsule shell the first one is colorants color of the capsule can be affected by the color or type of material capsulated as a general policy the color of the capsule shell should never be lighter in hue than the capsulated material more specifically darker colors are recommended for large size oral products as a rule clear colors usually are employed with clear type film materials and opaque colors are used with suspensions but the reverse of this rule can be chosen to achieve a particular appearance or for ingredient stability purpose also before a color is chosen mixture should be checked in the lab by addition of water to ascertain if reactions take place to cause the mixture to darken as in case of ascorbic acid and iron salts in vitamins and mineral formulations or as in case of reactions between iron and compounds of a phenolic nature since iron is present in gelatin dark spots may occur in the shell owing to the migration of water soluble iron sensitive ingredients 
from the fill material into the shell. For special effects or identification purposes, two colors, both opaque or one opaque and one clear, may be chosen since the manufacturing process involves two gelatin films. Water soluble dyes, certified lakes, pigments and vegetable colors alone or in combination are commonly used colorants. Titanium dioxide is commonly used opacifier in concentration ranging from 0.2 to 1.2 percent. Next additional component is flavoring agent. As and when required, essential oils at concentration of 2 percent or ethyl vanillin at concentration of 0.1 percent is used as flavoring agent for capsule shell. Preservatives at concentration of 0.2% are generally added to gelatin mass. Combination of methyl paraben and propyl paraben in ratio of 4 is to 1 is highly recommended. The addition of medicament to the gelatin mass usually is not recommended for economic reasons since only 50% of the gelatin mass is incorporated into the capsules. This results in 50% loss of the added medicament. However, certain highly active, relatively inexpensive compounds such as benzocaine in chewable cuff capsules may be used successfully. Apart from these components, some miscellaneous components can also be added to the capsule shells. In development of some chewable capsule shell, Sucrose 5% is used to impart sweet taste to capsule. In capsules, particularly those where cross-linking of gelatin might occur, fumaric acid at concentration of 1% is added. Fumaric acid reduces aldehydic tanning of gelatin and aids solubility of cross-linked gelatin capsules. In general, the additional components of the gelatin mass are limited in use by the amount required to produce the desired effect and also by their effect on capsule manufacturing and also because of economic factors. From the foregoing discussion on the gelatin shell, one may conclude that the pharmaceutical chemist must rely heavily on the experience of the custom capsule manufacturer. However, in order to choose the proper gelatin and gelatin formula, and color, the custom manufacturer must rely on the technical and product information designed and developed by the pharmaceutical chemist. With such mutual cooperation and free exchange of information, new products or dosage form can be efficiently developed. After discussion of components used for preparation of gelatin capsules, now we will discuss soft gelatin capsules. Soft gelatin capsules solves a number of problems and creates several important opportunities for medications, cosmetics and other specialized applications. They offer a technically elegant way to encapsulate liquids, paste and powders, especially those with limited solubility. They allow problematic drugs which might be difficult to swallow, taste bad or required passage farther into the digestive tract to be delivered acceptably to the patient. Soft gelatin capsules are solid dosage form containing generally liquid medication and therefore offer certain advantages. First, they permit liquid medications to become easily portable. Second, these capsules easily pass the appropriate compendial test and surpass other solid dosage forms in this respect because liquid formulations can be more accurately and precisely compounded, blended, homogenized and measured than can dry solid formulations. The pharmaceutical availability of drugs formulated for this dosage form as measured by disintegration time or by dissolution time often shows an advantage over other solid dosage formulations. The physiologic availability of drug is often improved since these capsules contains the drug in liquid form. That is, as a liquid drug substance or drug in solution or drug in suspension. 
These capsules have better tamper evidence since tampering leads to puncturing and visible leakage. Last but not the least, soft capsules offer safer handling of highly potent or cytotoxic drug compounds. Owing to their special properties and advantages, soft gelatin capsules are used in a wide variety of industries but they are used most widely in the pharmaceutical industry. Billions of capsules are made each year in various sizes and shapes and in a variety of colors and color combinations. Their pharmaceutical applications are First, they are used as oral dosage form of ethical or proprietary products for human or veterinary use. They are used as suppository dosage form for rectal use or for vaginal use. Rectal dosage forms are becoming more acceptable for pediatrics and geriatrics. They are also used as a specialty pack in tube form for human and veterinary single dose application of topical, ophthalmic and otic ointments. In the cosmetic industry, these capsules may be used as a specialty package for breath fresheners, perfumes, bath oils and various skin creams. In the next topic, we will discuss about manufacturing of capsules. Although this aspect of soft gelatin capsule is the primary responsibility of the custom manufacturer, the pharmaceutical chemist should have an understanding of the materials and equipments involved in the capsule manufacture, processing and quality control. The first step in the manufacturing of soft gelatin capsule is processing of gelatin. To assure proper conditioning of the gelatin films, the proper drying of the capsules and the consistent low moisture content of raw material and mixtures, the gelatin processing area must be air conditioned. The temperature of the gelatin processing area is usually in the range of 20 to 22 degrees Celsius and the humidity is controlled to a maximum of 40% RH that is relative humidity. Humidity is brought down to 20 to 30 percent RH in gelatin drying area. The wet gelatin is mixed with constituents such as plasticizer and solid constituents such as preservative, colorants, etc. in a suitable equipment such as a pony mixer. The resultant fluffy marks is melted under vacuum at 93 degrees Celsius. The mass is then maintained at a temperature of 57 to 60 degrees Celsius before and during the capsulation process. A study of capsule content is the most important step in capsule manufacturing. Soft gelatin capsule is a hermetically sealed one-piece capsule shell used to dispense a wide variety of liquids and solids. Requirements and specifications of these materials vary depending on the equipment of the manufacturer but there are basic precepts that may be used as a guide for the production of commercially acceptable capsules regardless of method of capsulation. The usual content of a soft gelatin capsule is a liquid or a combination of miscible liquids or a solution of a solid in a liquid or a suspension of a solid in a liquid. All such materials for capsulation are formulated to produce the smallest possible capsule consistent with maximum ingredient and physical stability, therapeutic effectiveness and production efficiency. The maximum capsule size and shape for convenient oral use in humans is 20 minim oblong, 16 minim oval or 9 minim round as shown on a screen. Some points should always be kept into consideration while filling of liquids or solids in soft gelatin capsules. The size of the capsule should be kept as small as possible and is decided by the specific gravity of the liquid to be filled. The capsulation of water immiscible liquid is the simplest form of soft gelatin capsulation and usually requires little or no formulation. Vegetable oils, mineral oils, lipids, non-ionic surfactants and low molecular weight polyethylene glycols along with less useful aromatic and aliphatic hydrocarbons, chlorinated hydrocarbons and high molecular weight alcohols, esters and organic acids 
could be used as major constituents of the capsule. Liquids ranging in viscosity from ethyl ether having viscosity of 0.222 centipoise to heavy adhesive mixtures exceeding viscosity of 3000 centipoise may be encapsulated but there are some exceptions since the property of viscosity alone is not the sole criteria. Water miscible or volatile liquids cannot be included as major constituents of the capsule since they can migrate into the hydrophilic gelatin shell and volatilize from its surface. Water, ethyl alcohol and of course emulsions fall into this category. These liquids can be used as co-solvent to aid in the preparation of solutions for capsulation in concentrations up to 5% of the capsule content. Liquids such as glycerine and propylene glycol cannot be major constituents of the capsule content owing to their softening effect on the gelatin shell. They could be added at concentration up to 10% either as co-solvent or along with liquids such as polyethylene glycols having a shell hardening effect when used. Liquids that exhibit the rheological properties of techiness such as glycerine can cause binding of valves and pumps during capsule filling and should be used carefully. For hygroscopic water miscible liquids such as polysorbate 80, a safety factor must be used in establishing the minimum fill volume and in choosing the dye. For example, a capsule to contain 500 mg of polysorbate 80 would have a calculated fill volume of about 7.5 minims. Assuming that there is 5% residual water in the dry capsules, the final fill volume would be about 8 minims. Although oily liquids do not retain moisture, water does pass from the shell of the capsule into the fill material and out again during the manufacture and drying of these capsules. This is important for the formulator to remember since such water transfer can and does have a bearing on formulations in which oily liquids are used as solvents or as vehicles for suspensions. Direct filling of solid is possible using Acogel technology. Acogel machine accurately fill powdered dry solids into soft gelatin capsules. Highly water soluble solids such as strong acids example citric acid, strong alkalis example sodium salt of weak acids, Salt of strong acids and bases such as sodium chloride and choline chloride and ammonium salts cannot be encapsulated as they can have deleterious effects on the gelatin shell. Solids that are unstable in the presence of moisture such as aspirin would not exhibit satisfactory chemical stability in soft gelatin capsule. Except for acogel process, Solids are filled into soft gelatin capsules in the form of solutions or a suspension. Usually a solution is more easily capsulated and exhibits better uniformity, stability and biopharmaceutical properties than does a suspension. Solids that are not sufficiently soluble in liquids are capsulated as suspensions. Such materials should be 80 mesh or finer in particle size owing to certain close tolerance of the capsulation equipment and for maximum homogeneity of the suspension. Usually the amount of base required for formation of a capsulatable preparation of solid is calculated by base adsorption method. Base adsorption is expressed as the number of grams of liquid base required to produce a capsulatable mixture when mixed with 1 gram of solid. The base adsorption of a solid is influenced by size, shape, physical state, density, moisture content and nature of solid particle. While determining base adsorption, the solid must be completely wetted by the liquid base. A practical procedure for determining base adsorption and for judging the adequate fluidity of a mixture is as follows. A weighed amount of solid is taken into a beaker. In a separate beaker, 100 gram of liquid base is taken. Small increments of the base was added to solid using a spatula and stirring is done after each addition 
until the solid is thoroughly wetted and uniformly coated with the base. This should produce a mixture that has soft ointment like consistency. The addition of liquid base is continued and stirring is done until mixture flows steadily from the spatula blade when held at 45 degree angle above the mixture. The base adsorption is given by the formula weight of base divided by weight of solid. The base adsorption is used to determine the minimum per gram factor of the solid. The minimum per gram factor is the volume in minims that is occupied by 1 gram of solid plus the weight of liquid base required to make a capsulatable mixture. The minimum per gram factor is calculated by dividing the weight of base plus the gram of solid by the weight of mixture per cubic centimeter or 16.23 minims. Theoretically, lower the base adsorption of the solid and the higher the density of the mixture, the smaller the capsule will be. The final formulation of a suspension invariably requires a suspending agent to prevent the settling of the solids and to maintain homogeneity. The most widely used suspending agent for oily bases is vac mixture and for non-oily bases PEG 4000 and 6000 are preferred. In all instances, the suspending agent used is melted in a suitable portion of liquid base and the hot melt is added slowly while stirring into the bulk portion of the base which has been preheated to 40 degrees celsius prior to addition of any solids. The solids are then added one by one with sufficient mixing between additions to ensure complete wetting. Further, all liquid solutions and suspensions for capsulation should be homogeneous, air free and preferably should flow by gravity at room temperature. Preparation for encapsulation should have a pH between 2.5 to 7.5 since preparations that are more acidic can cause hydrolysis and leakage of the gelatin shell and preparations that are more alkaline can tan the gelatin and thus affect the solubility of the shell. Stability problems are associated with the available moisture from the gelatin shell which when absorbed into the capsule content can cause areas of high concentration of water soluble solids leading to ionization and interaction of the solid. Such problems may be alleviated or eliminated by employing a less soluble salt or by employing coatings or adjusting pH. After preparation, the capsules are transferred to the quality control department. The quality control step in the processing of soft capsules are much the same as with other solid orals and are described in detail in next part of the module that is capsule part 2 hard capsules. Control tests specifically applicable to the quality of soft capsules may involve seal thickness determinations, fill weight determinations, shell moisture content, capsule fragility or rupture test and the physical stability testing. In this module we will only describe the control test specifically applicable to the quality of soft capsules such as seal thickness determination, fill weight determination, shell moisture content and physical stability testing. The first test is seal thickness. During manufacture, capsule samples are taken periodically for seal thickness checks. The seal thickness is measured under a microscope and changes in ribbon thickness, heat, or dye pressure are made if necessary. <clears throat> Acceptable seal thickness is one half to two thirds of the ribbon thickness. The next of the test is fill weight. Fill weight checks are made by weighing the whole fresh capsule, slitting it open and expressing the contents. The shell is then washed in a suitable solvent that is petroleum ether and the empty shell is reweighed. The next test is moisture content of the shell. The moisture content of the shell is determined by the toluene distillation method collecting the distillate over a period of 1 hour. After quality control test, the final physical control processing and packaging may be accomplished by the following inline continuous operations. Through automatic machines such as diameter sorter and color sorter, the overfilled 
underfilled foreign and capsules whose colors does not comply to the reference color are discarded while satisfactory capsule pass immediately to an electronic counting and packaging unit the new electronic counting units can count as many as 8000 capsules per minute directly into the bulk shipping carton following this step the cartons are labeled sealed and palletized and then ready for shipment The next we will discuss about the storage of capsules. The capsules prevented by proper packing should have satisfactory physical stability at temperatures ranging from just above freezing to as high as 60 degrees Celsius. However, unprotected soft gelatin capsules rapidly reach equilibrium with the atmospheric conditions under which they are stored. The physical stability of soft gelatin capsules is associated primarily with the pickup or loss of water by the capsule shell. The important points to be considered are first, storage of capsules at humidity less than 20% relative humidity at either low temperatures that is less than 2 degrees Celsius or high temperatures that is greater than 38 degrees Celsius has only transient effects. capsule returns to normal when returned to optimum storage conditions the transient effects are brittleness and greater susceptibility to shock requiring greater care in handling storage of capsules at humidity exceeding 60% relative humidity at room temperature produce pronounced effects on the capsule shell since absorption of moisture makes the capsule softer tackier and bloated However, the capsules do not leak unless the increased moisture has allowed a deleterious ingredient in the capsule to attack the gelatin. On return to optimum storage conditions, the capsules are dull in appearance and most likely inseparably stuck together. Storage at temperatures exceeding 24 degrees Celsius together with humidity exceeding 45% relative humidity results in more rapid and pronounced effect and may even can cause the unprotected capsules to melt and fuse capsules containing water soluble liquid bases may be affected to a greater extent than oil based capsules owing to the residual moisture in the capsule content and to the dynamic relationship existing between capsule shell and capsule fill during the drying process The optimum storage conditions for soft gelatin capsules are humidity ranging from 20 to 30% relative humidity and at temperature of 21 to 24 degrees Celsius. Further, accelerated physical stability test of capsules should be the integral part of the product development program. The test should be strictly relevant to the integrity of the gelatin shell. and should not be construed as a stability test for the active ingredients in the capsule the results of such test are used as guides for the reformulation of capsule content or the capsule shell or for the selection of the proper retail packages after the capsules have passed the shell integrity test additional physical studies should be conducted using the various types of retail packages being considered for the product These later tests should be designed to determine the shelf life of the product and may conform to most of the standard testing procedures employed by the company for its other solid dosage forms. In the last part of this module we will discuss about packaging of soft gelatin capsules. When bulk shipments of capsules are made by the manufacturer they are temporarily protected from normal changes in humidity by a suitable moisture barrier such as a 0.003 inch polyethylene bag with a standard fiber board carton since such packaging is not a permanent moisture barrier the capsule should be retail packed as soon as possible after receipt if immediately packing is not practical the bulk capsules in their original unopened cartons should be stored in an air conditioned area in which the humidity does not exceed 45% and temperature should be between 21 to 24 degrees celsius the retail packaging of these capsules should be done under similar conditions 
for the maximum physical and chemical stability of the product. Soft gelatin capsules may be retail packed in glass or plastic containers with tight closures or may be strip packed. Soft capsules have been available since the middle of the 19th century. With advancement in manufacturing and processing technology, the use of soft capsules has increased tremendously. Most of the recently developed drugs or drugs which are in development pipelines are water insoluble in nature. Soft capsules offer a technically elegant way to encapsulate liquids, paste and powders, especially those with limited solubility. They also allow problematic drugs which might be difficult to swallow, taste bad or require passage farther into the digestive tract to be delivered acceptably to the patient. Although capsule shells made of materials other than gelatin are there, but Still, use of gelatin in capsule manufacturing predominates due to its exclusive properties. Nowadays, soft gelatin capsules are used not only to deliver pharmaceutical drugs but also to deliver extracts, herbals, Ayurvedic preparation, and medicaments for topical, ophthalmic, otic, and rectal delivery in addition to oral delivery. Thank you.